Welcome back everyone to more foundation content here at Knee Pit Gaming. Today's video, we're gonna start a, a small Let's Play series because I really am having quite a bit of fun in this game, but I haven't gotten too terribly far into it. And the reason is I have spent a lot of time just testing out different things and different ways to have fun with the game. So we're gonna start up a gameplay series here and just see how far it goes. Uh, basically, this will go as far as our economy will take us, which generally means it will go as far as we can before I mess it up by either doing something wrong or forgetting to do something that I needed to do, which is very easy to do in a game like this where there are so many things going on, particularly as you start to grow and expand your city. So for our purposes, we're going to start out in the same area as we were in the uh, the first look gameplay video. And then we're going to do a few things a little different, uh, but a lot of stuff will end up being very similar between the two, at least here at the beginning. So now we have our beginning plot of land. Let's go ahead and put down that village center. And I'm going to do that right about... Let's put it there. Again, we're not going to worry too much about making sure we get everything in exactly the right spot. That's not our aim here. So we're gonna first, the first things first, let's go ahead and put a couple of builders in here. And I'm gonna pause the game for a second so that we can lay down some zones. We need extraction zones, and we're gonna be working with timber all in this area. So let's go ahead and put an extraction zone in this area for that. And that'll give those guys plenty of room to chop down some trees, especially here at the beginning. Then we've got our stone. We'll put down a extraction zone for that as well as the berries. Okay, so we're in good shape there. Let's go ahead and escape out of that. And then come in and put down a few of our starter buildings. Uh, we're going to start out, we're going to need, well, we're going to need all of these, uh, but to get started out, we're going to put down some lumber camps and what I'm going to try to do is just sort of align them along this area and we're going to put them to where we can enter. We're going to use these green arrows and have these guys enter and exit along a centralized road uh, as much as we can have sort of a path going through there. Okay, then we're going to need a gathering hut and let's see, we want to do, how do we want to do this? Tell you what, let's do, let's do it like this, because that will put the opening of, of the hut on the outside. So we're going to go ahead and snug these up as much as we can. And the first one will go right there. We need Stonecutter's Camp, which will go also in this area. Let's see, let's put this first one right like this. Now you you can put them pretty much anywhere at this state of the game, but we're going to try to give a little bit of room between the extraction area and where we're setting these up. And then finally we're going to put down a well and I'm going to put it right in uh, this trodden down area at the beginning. We're going to put it right about there. Okay, that'll get us up and running with some beginner type buildings. And let's go ahead and max out our speed, three times the normal speed. And you can see our two builders are going to immediately get to work. And then we've got everyone else for right now that is unemployed. Let's go ahead and bring up our workplace list. And I'm going to drop it over here in the bottom, toward the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, we've got our lumber camp is done. Gathering hut is done. So we're going to put two in each of those to get started. Okay, while we're thinking about this, let's go ahead and put a market down. Uh, we'll put the food stall and we'll put the market. I'm going to leave a small area to walk around in here, but we're going to use some of this area as well. Let's see, let's go ahead and get a blue tent uh, and let's spin this around because it will fit nicely right on top of that. Start that construction. So right now at the beginning of the game, it's all about setting up the basics. 
Um, and I don't start out the game generally with a layout in mind. I just sort of let it happen. Uh, that's part of the fun for me is that I don't spend too much time worrying about where things are going to go and where the optimal setup is for these things because, for me anyway, it takes away some of that fun. So we're going to let just things just sort of happen right now. And we are looking very good on our market. We'll be done here shortly on that. Uh, let's see, where are we? We got stone cutter. We'll go ahead and put one stone cutter in there. That leaves us one unemployed person, which will end up being part of the market. There'll be our food trader. And that'll keep some money going in. Right now we're spending money. We're down to 300 uh, gold out of 500 possible right now. There we go. I believe we're done. We are. Let's go ahead and assign a worker and then put berries in the slot that he is going to sell. All right, now that'll give us a second just to let the game run a little bit. And let's just see how uh, things get going because I think we're all caught up. We've got all of our villagers currently assigned with a job. And we might actually be able to get rid of one of our builders right now if we wanted to. Uh, but I don't think I want to do that because we're going to be building quite a bit as we move forward. Let's go ahead and put down an initial sawmill. And I'm going to put that sawmill sort of right here along the way. Because the sawmill is going to be very important to get us planks, which we're going to need for several buildings uh, as well as for trading. The warehouse being one of those, the first buildings we'll in encounter that will need those. Okay, again, just trying to keep a basic idea for a path running right in this general area. But the specifics of it, I'm not terribly worried about. We'll just let it happen as it happens. Okay, and then along the way, as we start to cut down a lot of these trees, we'll come in with some uh, reforesting and we'll take care of that a little bit later on. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Okay, we need one more stone to finish up the well. It looks like he's got that and we're all set here. Okay, now we've got a new zone. Let's go ahead and move our villager list down so we can see a little bit more. So we got some new buildings unlocked, a new residential zone unlocked. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab some influence here at the very beginning. And we're also going to want to, looks like we should have some new villagers coming in pretty soon. I haven't looked to see exactly when that's going to be, but I would imagine it's going to be fairly soon. Let's go ahead and put our stone mason over here again, nearby. Uh, the stone area, and we'll also put uh, a warehouse in this general vicinity as well. Let's take a look at where we are. It looks like we got three more days till we got some more immigration. All right, so our first housing area, let's go ahead and set that up. Residential, and you can see this green area is where the higher value land is for building houses. Now, I'm going to be very careful about using that because I've got some uh, some plans in mind as we continue to expand. Things like churches and wells and so on will actually extend this green area out. But for right now, what I'm going to do is, since I plan on a path being somewhere in this area, I'm going to go ahead and drop that first area right in here. And you can see they're immediately going to start building. So not all of this area is particularly useful for them right now or desirable, but I don't want to get too close to my extraction area over here because I've got some plans uh, for that. Actually, we can scooch up a little bit closer to this. That'll give them a little bit of an area to start building in. Okay, we've got two new villagers that are going to be joining, which means they're coming from somewhere over here to the side. And there they come, and they'll make their their trail as this happens over and over. Now these guys will have to figure out where we want uh, to put them. So they're going to come down through. They'll be here in a few moments. Okay, our stonemason is, our stonemason hut rather is up and going. Uh, now we're almost there with our sawmill, which is very important. 
Okay, we'll let these guys get in here. Again, I've always seen them in, in groups of two. Okay, so they'll get to the center of the city. And then we're going to put one of those as our stonemason. And then I'm going to give this a second, and we're going to put the next one in our sawmill. Okay, so we've got some, the Splendor of Our Village has unlocked a new tier of unlockables. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. That's these, uh, sort of these star values that you see. Okay, almost done. And while we're waiting for the last little bit of that, you can see some housing going in down here. Uh, let's take a first look at the labor area. So if you click on this, we've got some things we can unlock. And the most important thing right now, of course, the Fisher's Hut. Um, I haven't tried it yet on this map, but uh, unless it comes with some water of its own, like a small pond, we have no use for that because there's no water on this map. But we do need the Lord's Manor. The Lord Manor is going to allow us to extend the amount of gold we can keep beyond 500. Uh, each new treasury we add onto that building, uh, the Lord Manor will increase by i believe it's 200 so let's go ahead and get our first carpenter in here now we have once again everybody is up and ready to go and if i take a look at our workplace list uh everybody's got at least one so far and that's very important so the next thing we're going to want to do as our money is perfectly fine right now next thing we're going to want to do is is open up this trade with davenport so we need 20 planks which will take a little while since, of course, we're just getting started here. We're going to need some planks for that. And we're also going to need some planks for a warehouse. Let's see where we want to put our first warehouse. Let's see if I put it right over... Let's put it right over there. Sort of out of the way. Again, none of this is going to be extremely efficient planning but uh, this is the type of game where i find myself just from time to time slowing down the time and just sort of moving the camera at ground level through and just watching these guys as they move around throughout uh, our newly formed village again very impressed with the graphics i love this type of design i'm sure it's not for everyone uh, but but i do like the cartoony design and look overall very nice. Okay, let's zoom back out here a little bit. And you can see they're getting started there. Uh, this is going to delay our uh, ability to accumulate some planks here early on. But we have to have this warehouse before we can do any trading. So we might as well go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, let's come in and take a look at how we're doing with our residential zone. Uh, let's go ahead and put some more... Again, I'm not going to give them the great areas for right now. We're going to come back in um, a little bit later. And we're going to add some things like churches and additional wells and so on. So we're not going to worry too much about the land value as it currently is. All right, let's see how we're doing on construction. Okay, we've got all the planks we needed from the, the ones we started with. Now we just need some additional stone. And, of course, the stone's not going to be coming in uh, too quickly because we only have one stone cutter, but we just had a few new villagers come in. So I'm going to put those guys as stone cutters for now. And then let's see when we're going to get our next batch. Oh, yeah, three more days, so we're good there. So you can already see, as we continue to grow uh, and our village gets bigger, we're going to run into some issues with micromanaging because this game, at, particularly at this point, I'm not sure what their uh, overall plan is as we get closer and closer to the ultimate full release. But at this particular point, there's a lot of micromanaging that you need to do going forward. And a lot of that will deal with uh, the different zones. For example, uh, have to figure out exactly how you want to use the reforestation zone versus the extraction zone as it relates to your wood production. Because my current understanding, and, and this isn't 100%, but what I've seen so far is it doesn't appear as though if you have a zone for reforestation, which 
you know, we could certainly use right about now in here that even once these trees grow in, the, the loggers won't come back in here as long as it's zoned reforestation. So there's a lot of micromanaging there, it appears. And again, time will tell uh, as we get going farther along. Oh, oh, here we go. We are ready to go here. Let's get out of the zoning. And so we need an available, at least one and preferably two transporters. And it just so happens we have a couple of them that should be on their way right now. In fact, yes, here they come. So these two guys will serve as our transporters and then we'll get these slots taken care of. Uh, slot number one, we want to be berries. And again, I'm thinking about the things we're going to be trading uh, early on. Planks will be the second thing. And then the third thing will be the polished stone. And then we need our fourth slot early on for tools. And that's going to, I believe, get us an extra area of land that we can unlock. Okay, we have our two unemployed. Let's go ahead and add those two. And they'll begin taking care of that. Okay, let's go ahead and see if it's already given us... No, we still own... We would owe 500 gold for this. No, we're not interested in that. Okay, so we need to unlock that trade route. I couldn't remember if it was the trade route or or setting up everything for the trade route that actually got us the bonus. So at this point, again, we're allowing these guys to, to do their work, and we're going to continue to expand. We're going to put uh, some additional uh, gathering huts down in this area, perhaps in this area as down below as well, just depending on the housing and how that goes. Same thing with the stone. We're going to put more uh, stone cutters, and in fact, while I'm here, let's go ahead and put a reforestation area. Right in here. So we'll go ahead and start that. They've still got plenty of room right now. And then once we expand out, they'll have uh, trees basically in every direction we might go. So everything... Looking good there. When do we get some more villagers? Looks like we got a couple more coming here in one more day. Okay, so as far as our existing workplaces, we need a little bit more help in the gathering huts. Uh, we need another uh, lumber worker. We need some more help in the sawmill, which is going to be very nice. You can see we've got some planks now. Let's go ahead and open up that trade route. There we go. Now we need to set up our trading resources. What do we want to trade in? Well, for one thing, we want to sell berries. And as time goes on here, we want to get more and more berries. Same thing with the planks. Let's go ahead and keep uh, 20 of those. We want to purchase, keep an outstanding purchase order of uh, tools. For right now, I think we'll just start with 10. Uh, that if we find that that's not enough, then we can always increase that. And then the polished stone. Uh, let's go ahead and just keep that at 10 right now. We'll sell that out. So those are the resources right now. And I'm pulling that from this area. Davenport will purchase. I'm not, I'm not too terribly worried about what they will sell uh, right now other than tools. But they will buy berries polished stone, and plank. So I want to make sure that we get those uh, set up, and that's why they occupy the slots they do within this area. So right now, everything is looking very good. You can see we've got some tools stored in here and some polished stone. I like it. Our happiness is going good right now. We're at 75, along with 16 villagers. We've got a couple more unemployed people. So I want to go ahead and max out this gathering hut and let's work on the sawmill a little bit since that is also a source of income. Let's go ahead and put down another gathering hut. And we'll put it right next to the other one. And my first thought whenever I started playing the game was that 
these, we could actually use these up, that we would gather all the berries and then we would have to wait a certain amount of time for them to replenish. I haven't seen that actually happen. It, as of now, it appears as though we can just continually gather berries from here uh, infinitely. Same thing with the stone. Now, I've certainly not seen that with the wood. Uh, let's go ahead and get a... Let's get a forester. We'll put him... We'll drop him right in here. So again, we got some more villagers coming. Uh, money is doing just fine. Uh, long term, we're going to want to expand beyond our 500 cap here. But for right now, everything is looking quite nice. And, oh, looks like I have closed out our workplace list, so we'll bring that back up. Gathering Hut is ready to go. We'll wait for those villagers to come in. And let's see where they are. There they are. Okay, we'll put one of these in the Forester Camp, which has a maximum of one anyway. And then we will start working on some additional uh, gathering hut workers. Okay, now we've got our first uh, mission. Uh, deliver 30 berries. Uh, we might be able to do that. But if we can do that, I want to help my people simply because this is where any unlockables really are. And right now, all I'm really concerned is the Lord Manor, which we already have. So it's not a terribly big deal uh, to me. Later on in the game, uh, there can be some, some other things, such as particularly with the kingdom, where you will have the keep and you can have some soldiers uh, protecting your village, as well as the walls, fencing, and, and so on. But for right now... Uh, I don't believe that is actually implemented in the game to where you need that for happiness. Uh, but we'll we'll keep an eye out for that. Let's put one of our new villagers as our forester. And let's go ahead and max out our lumber camp. I think it's what we want to do next. So the next thing we're going to need in order to get into the wheat farm, windmill, bakery, and so on, uh, we can work with sheep and so on. That's some of these that we get down into next uh, is we're going to need a church and right now i'm just trying to take a, a quick look and see how we're doing uh, you can see some reforestation efforts that are have already begun that is excellent i'm leaving this area open for uh, most likely for more uh, more forestry workers but i might decide to put some of those over in this area as well again we'll just see how it goes Okay, let's adjust our list here so I can make sure I can see. All right, so we're already making quite a bit of headway. And again, we're playing the entire thing on max speed right now, just letting things happen uh, and not worrying too much about anything other than just keeping a quick eye on our goal, which right now is maxed out. So we need to, uh, to take care of that. And to do that, we need the Monument and the Lord Manor. But again, we're going to wait just a bit on doing that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our territory. We should have one uh, free one, and I think... Let's see, where do we want to go? Uh, this is another good area for stone, as well as the berries. No stone in this area, but there is uh, the forestry, which would combine nicely with what we already have, so I think I'll expand out into there. For our second area, here comes some additional villagers, which is perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and get these guys. Oh, looks like a trader. Let me go ahead and pause this thing so I can click on him. And now we can take a look at what he wants to buy. Again, this guy is from Davenport. And you can see what he's looking for are the three things listed under Davenport, what they're buying, as well as, of course, what they're selling. So what do they want to buy? They want to buy some berries, polished stone, as well as planks. Now, for our purposes right now, we're very near our maximum. So it's not very helpful to us, but we do have those resources. And you can keep a track on your resources with yet another window that you can keep up over here. And here you can see just how much polished stone we have, as well as planks and berries, all that sort of thing 
you can find out. Of course, we can only sell or trade uh, that which is currently located in uh, a storage area. Okay, let's go ahead and get this these guys up and rolling again. So as this guy comes through, he will head over to our trading area, and you can see he's gotten what he needs, but we are maxed out, so we can't get any more gold than what we currently have. So let's go ahead and work our way out on some more extraction zones. And we're going to go ahead and let these guys work forestry in this area for now. And reforestation, we're going to expand that out into this entire area. So they can now cut in this new area that we've designated as well as this area as well but for right now we're going to let this area rest and hopefully it will become repopulated and start to look like these other forest areas very soon now we're still waiting for these 30 berries to be available this is going to be difficult you can see we have very few berries in there but it does mean that i'm going to want to try and ramp up our gathering huts uh, as much as i can uh, and if we don't end up being able to deliver this in the next 49 game days, then we'll lose a little bit off of our labor. But again, that's okay for right now. As time goes on, we'll have many opportunities uh, to expand on that and, and do a much better job. Okay, it looks like right now everybody is still doing a good job. Gathering hut number two is at two of three. Uh, let's see, sawmill, we'll want to put another person in there, as well as some additional stone cutters, and that may be what we get into next. But for right now, in order to really expand, we're going to need a couple of buildings that I mentioned earlier. We're going to need a church. Now, this church should expand uh, the desirable area for housing, so we're going to start out with a door. And what I'm going to do... Let's see, where is the connection point? Looks like it's going to be on the other side. There it is. And you, these are modular builds. So you can do these basically any way you want to. There's a couple of new villagers. Now we're going to add our core. Now if I drop it right on here, you can see all of these white dots that will give us areas that we can add on. Uh, let's see, if I s make this look more traditional... Then, okay, I think that'll give us enough room for some additions. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and give it a shot anyway. But either way, we should be fine. Now, you notice that we can't start construction just yet. We have the core down, we have a door, but we don't have um, a bell tower yet. So we want to do, in fact, I want to do an extension here. Uh excuse me, not an extension, another core, and looks like we're just going to get by with this. So this will expand our capacity. So we'll go ahead and put that down. Now we want to add our, our tower onto this. And we'll drop that tower. Let's see, where do we want to put the tower? Yeah, that'll be fine, because that's, that's going to really use up the available area quite nicely, I think. And then we can always put down additional churches as we need to or maybe there's a little bit additional room to expand but we want to put these down uh, as well as if i can click on it there we go i'm going to put down another well uh, and let's see where do we want to do that let's put it on let's go ahead and turn it facing this way and we'll put it right there. Normally, I'd want to put it probably somewhere over to the side, but I'm trying to leave room. I'm more worried about room right now than I am with the efficiency of this. And then I'm going to come to the side of that, and I'm going to put our Lord Manor. Uh, let's see. We need a door. And let's see. Where do we want to put this? Yikes. Okay, I'm going to put it right like this. So this isn't going to come out quite as nicely as I was hoping. All right, so we've got our core. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we spin this thing around. 
No, I don't like that. And the reason I don't like that is because on the side here is where I can put our treasuries. You can see we've got three locations on the sides. And this looks like it's going to be fine and not interfere with the well. So we'll put down one there. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and put a couple down while we're in business here. Now you can change the shape of these and the size and really uh, work with those. But uh, for me, the default design works out perfectly well. And unfortunately, we are running out of time. You see we've got four workers here that we need to do something with. I'm going to go ahead and max out a few of these things. And let's see what we got. So let's max out the gathering hut. We maxed out uh, the sawmill, stone cutters. So that means we need to get a few more of these up and running. So let's add another lumber camp. And I'm going to do that right, right about there. And then we need another, uh, let's see, stone cutter. We're going to put it, let's see, let's go ahead and put it over to the side here. Again, not straying too far from the area where our stone is located, so we'll put it right there. Also, not infringing too much upon our uh, reforesting efforts. Okay, so that looks like everybody is now, has a job. And I like to sort these by job a lot of times because at the very bottom will be the unemployed. So I can scroll down through there to have a quick look and see exactly what's going on and what we need. Looks like we've got a trader who's coming back through. Let's take a look at him. Again, he's gonna go straight for the, uh, the storage area or the, the warehouse. There's what he's looking to trade in. And that's why it is so valuable as time goes on to unlock these various trade routes is because it gives you the ability to, number one, sell your items and keep uh, your coffers plenty full. And then it also gives you the ability uh, to buy various items that you might need but don't currently have production set up for. So at this point, I think we're going to leave it here. We got quite a bit done. So we've got an extra area. Let's see, do we have another free area yet? Nope, not yet. We need to get our church built, I believe, is what's going to trigger that next area, open it up. So we'll have to make a decision about where we want to expand to. A lot of empty area here. And what I'm thinking of in the future is where are we going to put our residential, which I'm thinking is going to be down in this area. And also, where are we going to put our farms as we get into that, not only uh, our crops, but also our sheep. Where are we going to be doing all of that type of thing? So a lot of decisions to make, and most importantly, a lot of fun to be had. Thank you very much for joining me, and stay tuned as we will continue our support for Foundation.